Hey everyone, Andrew here, and this is the new Samsung Galaxy Note 9. So, here's the brand new box. It's beautiful, the nice pen, and Samsung. And then, you flip it open, and then you take out the thing that says Note 9, and look, it's like a blue, it's not the black on the outside, it's actually a blue on the inside to like match the ocean blue or whatever of the phone. After you take out this thingy, then you have yourself the phone. Tyler! Tyler from Tech Support! I told you to leave the phone in here! It's in your pocket! Oh, it's in my pocket! Oh, it's right here. Oops. Sorry, Tyler. This is the new beautiful Note 9, and I actually have a clear case on it, so I'm gonna take that off real quick. There it is. Bye. We don't care about you. Okay, what we do care about is this beautiful, majestic phone that is ocean blue. Very pretty. Like, just, just take a minute and look at this. Tell me this isn't pretty. Starting out, the glass back, fingerprint everywhere. It will just steal all your fingerprints and clutter it up, make it super dirty, and you need to clean it all the time. I wish they would have done this matte blue along the whole back instead of the glass blue. And they say we did the glass back for wireless charging. Uh, my old phone, it didn't have a glass back and it wireless charged, so Apple and Samsung and whoever else tells you that, that you have to have a glass back to wireless charge. It's a bunch of BS. Um, I'm sorry, it is. It's a bunch of bull. The charger is super nice, like being able to fast charge on this thing, it's amazing. The fast charging, like I plug it in in the morning, I go eat breakfast, uh, whatever, and it goes from 40% to 80% by the time I'm done in like a half an hour or something like that. That is amazing. And while we're on the topics of battery, it's a 4,000 milliamp battery, which compared to my last phone, if you didn't see that video, link in the description, it's only 100 milliamps more than my last phone, and that phone's four years old. But I've used this phone for about a month now. This battery will last you maybe even three days with average use. And that's not with the battery saving mode. What if I turn that on? I could get maybe even a week out of this battery with just a little bit of average use. And I'm not saying 100% to 0% three days, I'm saying 80% to 20%. So imagine, what if you did 100 to zero? You could get even more out of that. If you can have your battery last more than a day, of average use, that is one of the best things you can have in a phone. So I just set up this display real quick to show you as an example, and uh, bear with me. I just got this screen protector, and I noticed that uh, it's actually black on the top and bottom, and it actually covers up like a millimeter of the screen or something at the bottom. Also, beveled edges. You see how the screen kind of rolls off there on the side? That's Samsung's thing, that's fine. I don't mind it at all. Also, it's like extra widescreen. It's not a 16 by nine like a normal phone is. It's way wider. So like if you're in YouTube or something and you're watching a video, you can actually enlarge it and it cuts off the top and bottom to fill the whole entire screen, which is actually kind of a cool idea. Like if you're watching a movie on your phone, you can actually zoom into it and it cuts out the black bars and it fills more screen. I don't know, cool touch. It also has uh, the ability to do split screen with two different apps. 
Um, I personally haven't used it that much. Some of because I forget, some because not all apps work with the split screen, like Instagram doesn't work, which kind of stinks. The display, it gets very nice and bright. It's awesome display. You can see it outside like almost perfect if you really crank it up. Uh, that is amazing. It actually goes up to a 1440 display. The other nice thing is there's no notch. I thought I was gonna hate that the buttons were built into the screen, but actually how their software works, it actually is pretty nice. I have these two swapped. Um, that's because Samsung, they wanted to be different and they had them the other way, but my old phone was like this, so then I just switched it back. The audio on here, it has a headphone jack. Praise the Lord, you kept your headphone jack. Like, Apple, you made a big mistake. Uh, keep your headphone jack. I don't want to buy Bluetooth headphones. I don't have Bluetooth headphones. Sound card in this thing. Uh, I was comparing it to my old phone, and my old phone, for some reason, sounded actually a little bit better for some reason. That phone's four years old. This phone's brand new and whatever. The problem was, is the equalization. I just had to get into the equalizer on this phone and just change a couple things, tweak it, and it sounds way better than any sound I've ever heard. And then you turn on the Dolby Atoms setting, and then it sounds amazing. Like, there's... I've never heard better audio in my life. And it's not just for the headphones. They have amazing audio in the speakers on the bottom and top here. You never think about playing a song just straight from your phone or anything and having people listen to it because it would just sound like absolute trash. This phone, you can do it. You can do it. It sounds so good. Like, it's the best speakers out of a phone I have ever heard. Like, it's almost headphone quality speakers in here. And you get it from here and here at the same time, and it has a nice surround stereo uh, sound, and it's amazing. They also get really loud. Like, it sometimes gets so loud, you can, like, feel the back vibrating. It's crazy. So, speakers on this thing. Amazing. Good job, Samsung. Gaming on this phone, I haven't done a whole lot with. I'm not a huge phone gamer. Uh, I like my PC. Uh, I have tested it. It is good. Like, it has good graphics and everything. That's the only thing that I've seen where the phone has actually gotten a little bit hot on the back is only from gaming, not from, like, over-brightened display or anything. And they also have a performance mode to go with it, so you can boost it even a little bit more. It has a fingerprint scanner right here. It also has face recognition ID. I don't use any of that, so I can't speak for it. I am not big into all this fancy new features. It is a little bit big in the hand. Like, you can't really just walk around and have, like, your finger underneath here and do stuff like you can do that for when you're texting, but then lock buttons right here. But to do audio, you have to move your hand up and reach these two buttons up here. Sometimes you kind of have to hold it higher up, which is interesting, but I don't mind it that much. Um, sometimes you can do a two-handed. Okay, this thing right here, pet peeve, Bixby button. Completely worthless. They have Bixby built into this thing, and I never use it and will never use Bixby. And you can't even change this button to set to do another th thing. So you might just accidentally press it one day when you're trying to go for the volume, and then Bixby will come up and it'll be like, why aren't you using me? It's like, because I don't want you. I don't care about you. So the camera on this thing, it does have the selfie camera. It has dual cameras. One's a wide angle, one's a telephoto. And these things are amazing. This phone probably has the best camera in any smartphone. So I was out with some friends a week or two ago and we were taking pictures. And a couple of them had the iPhone X and I had the Note 9. The Note 9 looks better than the iPhone X. Yes, it does. And it's amazing. And I love this camera so much. Now, I can't say anything about the Pixel 2. Even if the Pixel 2 
is better than this camera, this is the second best camera in a smartphone at the moment. And if it's better than the Pixel 2, then it's first. Can't get any better. So you have the wide angle on the telephoto. The telephoto is a two time zoom versus the wide angle. And that is super nice to have. It also has a dual aperture. So you can get HDR pictures or like amazing and low light pictures, which I'll go into a DSLR comparison in a minute. The camera, it has auto. It has a live focus, which the live focus is amazing. It's like a fake blur sort of thing. And that is the best thing in a camera. And it looks, it makes everything look super sharp, super crisp, and then gives that super shallow depth of field like a cinematic camera. It has a pro mode, which can shoot raw pictures, which that is super cool. And it gives you manual, over your shutter speed, your ISO, you can do manual focus if you want, your white balance, your everything. You have complete control. Now, I personally don't like how it's set up because you have to like press a button and then go to the next thing and then press another button. Like it just takes a long time to set it up manually. But if you do like that, that is there. It obviously has a panorama. It has video. It has AR emojis. It has slow-mo, super slow-mo, hyperlapse, all that fancy stuff. Specs on the thing, 12 megapixel camera. The dual aperture is 2.4 and 1.5. And 1.5 means really good and low light. It's a super fast lens. And it will also get a really nice shallow depth of field. It also has like flaw detection and scene optimizers, which like changes the colors depending on what you're taking a picture of. You can turn that off if you want. I haven't seen much of a difference. It's kind of like an auto uh, editor in a way. So instead of you editing it, it just edits it right there. So I think it's fine. I haven't seen anything wrong with it. Video. 1080p at 60 frames, 4K at 60 frames. That right there, 4K at 60 frames, amazing. Like what DSLR can do that? Not many. That spec right there is matching the $6,000 DSLR Canon 1DX Mark II. That does 4K at 60 frames. Like this phone is a sixth of the price of that DSLR and it does the same 4K. It's a lower bit rate, so it doesn't look quite as good, doesn't have quite the dynamic range or anything, but it does 4K at 60. And then the super slow-mo 1080 at 240 frames per second. That is insane. And to get even crazier, if you jump down to 720p, which is still reasonable in video life nowadays. 960 FPS. That's a slow-mo guy's camera right there. That's a thousand frame camera. You can do crazy things with this phone. There's your specs for the camera. I think it's freaking amazing and probably the best camera in a smartphone right now. I went out a few weeks ago and it took side-by-sides with my DSLR that I'm actually shooting this video on right now, which is a T7i. I had two different lenses. I had the 18 to 55, which goes down to 3.8 aperture, and then the 50 mil, which is a 1.8 aperture. And so I took a bunch of pictures with both those lenses, then compared it to the Note 9, and look at the results. It's actually pretty close. The only big difference I saw between the T7i, which is a $1,000 DSLR camera, versus this $1,000 phone is the dynamic range. Some of the pictures on the phone I was shooting in auto, and some of them I was shooting in pro mode, so I was controlling all the settings. Honestly, this phone, I think for the average person, is a DSLR killer. Most people, if they have this phone, do not need a DSLR. For the most part, you can do everything you need in your phone now. And $1,000 on a camera or $1,000 on a phone, 
a phone, you can watch videos, have social media, talk to people, call people, and do these pictures versus a DSLR, it's just pictures and video. That's just crazy how we've come to that nowadays, that you can pack this much camera into this much camera. That's just crazy. This phone has expandable storage. So on the top here, there's a little dot. There's a thing in this box here. This box has a little thing that you poke in there and then it takes the slot out and then you can put a micro SD card in there. And there you go, more storage. That's really nice. I wish I would have had that on my old phone. Um, but I don't even need that on this phone because this phone has over 100 gigs and I don't think I can ever reach 100 gigs, partially because I take all my pictures off of it, but they do make a 500 some gig version of this phone and they do make 500 some gig micro SD cards. So you can have a terabyte of storage in your phone if you want. That's crazy. The last main feature of this phone is the S Pen. So you, if camera focus here, you push in and then it comes out. It gives you a little grippy thing so you can pull the S Pen out with your fingernails. And then it comes up with a bunch of stuff that you can do. So you can make notes, you can do other things. If you have the S Pen thing turned on, there's a little button here that you can press. And so if you're in pictures, instead of pressing the button on the phone, you can just use the little button on the pen and it takes a picture. You can set this button to do other things on the phone. Probably the nicest thing about having the pen built into the phone is that I will actually use a stylus now. Like before, I'd never use a stylus because I'd never carry it around alongside my phone. I'd just lose it or something. But this, you can just slide it right in your phone and it's there. And then if you want to use it, you just take it back out and there you go. I'm gonna leave the S Pen here and nothing's on the phone here. And now I'm going to walk away. I'm walking away from the pen, walking away with the phone, walking way away with the phone. Walking way away, okay, coming back with the phone. Nothing's come up on the screen. Coming back, coming back, and it doesn't work. You're supposed to work, phone. So what has happened in the past, I can't get it to work right now, but when I've left the S Pen down and then I come back, then it vibrates my phone and it says, please reinsert your S Pen when done using, basically saying you, hey, you left your pen on the table. Uh, put it back in your phone, don't lose it. Now, the problem I see with this is, one, you saw that it just didn't work. Um, two, is what if you're on a trip and you're in a restaurant and you leave your pen on the table of the restaurant and then you leave? The phone only vibrates when it comes back to the pen. And even then it doesn't always work. But what happens if you never come back to where the pen is? It's gone. Like, it's not gonna vibrate when you leave like it should. It also like shifts around a tiny bit. It's nice to write with. You can draw pictures. Also, this thing, I'm gonna just annoy you. Yes. It sounds like a regular pen almost, and it is the best fidgeter ever. So if you're in the middle of class, you can just whip it out of your phone and just start doing this if it's noisy around or anything and people don't wanna kill you because you're annoying. But if you're stressing and fidgeting or something, just keep doing this. Yes, Samsung Note 9, best fidget phone ever. And then you just slide it back in there and whoop, it vibrates, be like, voot, voot, it's back in, and almost dropped it there, it's fine. Uh, yeah, your pen's back in there. So after all that hardware stuff, it is the closest thing to a perfect phone we have ever had. And that is amazing, good job, Samsung. That's an amazing feat. The camera's amazing, the speaker's amazing, the display is amazing, the battery life's amazing. The All the hardware is a plus awesome. Now, the problem comes in 
with the software. Samsung decided to do things differently, I like to stand out from their fellow competitors, and what I have to say to you, Samsung, is there is a reason it is not done any other way. What do I mean by that? So, Bixby, that I already talked about that, that's not the biggest thing. Um, the headphones. When I got the phone, I plugged in my headphones, I got sound through my headphones. The problem is, is it sends the sound to your headphones, but it still sends sound to the speakers in your phone. And because mine are closed back headphones, I couldn't hear it. I had to take off my headphones like a half an hour later, and then I was like, wait, why is it making sound? And then I check back, and it's playing sound here. So it's playing sound both places. Uh, the problem is, what if you're in a library and you're listening to music or school or whatever, wherever you are, and you're, you think your music's coming to your headphones? The reality of it is everyone's listening to it. That's a problem. You shouldn't have to do that. And what's the fix? There's no settings to fix that. The way to fix it is getting an app called Sound Assistant by Samsung themselves. So they knew there was a problem, but they didn't decide to put it in the software or the settings or anything at all. They decided to make a completely new app for it. And then you set your settings and then it's fine. Another thing that that same app does is do not disturb. Now you say, Andrew, what's the problem with the do not disturb on the Note 9? Uh, the problem is, is that you can only set one thing in the settings of the Note 9. You can't set more than one automatic rule. What if I wanted a rule for sleep and a rule for school or work or whatever? What if I wanted three rules? Nope, can't do that. Can't have more than one. So what do you have? You have to go back into Sound Assistant and you have to go to Scenarios. And then you can set multiple and add. So once again, they knew there was a problem, but instead of deciding to fix it for the phone, they're just like, now nah, we'll make an app. Oh, oh wait, uh, by the way, um, it's not automatically installed. Um, it's hard to find. You, no one knows about the app, but we did make an app, so you can't complain. I'm complaining. It's a problem. You can't just give people one automatic rule and think their life is going to be fine. No. What's another problem? Notifications. Okay, so edge lighting. This is what edge lighting looks like. Um, it does the blue light thingy. Let's do it again. You see, it lights up all the edges of the phone and it has a little thing at the top there and you can set different custom settings on that and it's pretty cool. Um, the problem is, is notifications from certain apps don't work with it. I'll get back to the edge lighting in just a second. Notifications, they have a blue light up here that flashes when you have a notification that you haven't checked yet. And for text, they will do the edge lighting thing around here when your screen is off. That's fine, that works. Other apps though, it won't. Even if you set Instagram DMs to make the edge lighting go, it will not do it. it. Right now, it just vibrated and there was nothing there. And, okay, you saw that flashing light? Okay, Instagram. I'm going to tell you it's Instagram. Instagram, right there. Right there. I told you. It, j perfect example. Thanks, coincidence. Um, right there. It does not do it. I have the setting turned on to do edge lighting and it does not work. That's a problem. So when so you either have to have always on display, but then that runs down the battery. So why would I do that? Um, so I have the phone sitting down on my desk. The screen's off. I don't want to break my workflow every five minutes to check if I have a new no notification or anything. Um, so I have the phone on my desk here, and I'm just going along, editing away, doing whatever, and I'll check it if I get a notification. The thing is, is if it doesn't show on the screen, 
I won't notice, because what if I have headphones on? Then I can't hear the notification sound. Even the vibrate, my desk, it doesn't vibrate too well. Like, it absorbs a lot of the vibration, and you can't hear it or anything. So, so I have notifications sitting on there that I needed to answer two hours ago. And I still haven't noticed just because I haven't checked my phone. Even worse, I have received notifications hours after they have been sent. So, and it's not with text, it's with Instagram DMs specifically. Like, Instagram and Samsung don't work at all. There can be no flashing light here saying there's a notification on here from Instagram. The instant I press down here to light up the screen, then I get the notification that Instagram had a message right now. I get into the phone, I check what time it arrived to me, and it was two hours ago. What is wrong with your phone that you can't have notifications work until you turn on the phone? That is a problem for people like me who are working away and don't check their phone every five minutes. That's one of the biggest problems I have with the phone. Now for the last final cherry on top of hating the software. There are so many settings in this phone that it would be easier to convert all my Android stuff and move it to an iPhone and go through all the iPhone settings than it would be to set up this Samsung Android. Now, it'd be easier for me to use iOS than Samsung Android because I've used iOS before. I've never had an iPhone, but I've used an iPhone a ton. I know how it works. Setting up this phone, it took me two days to set it up, go through all my uh, settings, all my everything, get it all set up. I had an Android phone for four years before this. It's not like I didn't know how Android worked. It's because this phone has so many more dang settings, and not just that it has way more settings, it's that the settings are not organized right, and a bunch of them are completely worthless, or they should be combined with something else, or they're hard to find, whatever. It took me two days to figure it out. And that's not including figuring out all these different apps that I had to do to make things work better. And setting up my old phone four years ago, that took a few hours. A few hours when I'm just learning Android for new versus these two days over here for already knowing Android, but just because Samsung is dumb. And that was with transferring all my data over all my contacts, my apps, whatever. That is just horrible design. The background thing, you have to make an account, it's stupid stuff like that. The keyboard, I hated Samsung keyboard so much, I installed Google keyboard and I'm now using the Google keyboard on my Samsung phone. A problem I have with this right here, like the draw thingy, why would you make your code area smaller than what it was on a smaller phone than this? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So for me, I can be doing my code and it will think it's wrong, even though I did it right, just because it accidentally hit one of the dots over there just because it's so much smaller. Um, so first off, make it bigger, please. And then second, I've had it lock me out after five times because it is so small and it, I mess it up and whatever. But after locking you out once, then you have to wait a minute. And then there's a setting in here somewhere that if you have to be careful, you should turn it off that if you get locked out of your phone twice, it will factory reset your phone. Bye-bye all your contacts, data, whatever, because the phone thought someone was stealing it, but really, the thing was so small that 
you couldn't put in your code right and it was just screwing it up. With all that being said, it's possible that the average consumer will not be able to use this phone because the software sucks and because all the settings don't work how they should. They, there's too many and it takes so long to set up. All of that and the headphone thing being like if you plug it in, it's gonna send it through the speakers still. Like not, the average person is not gonna know to go download whatever app and fix it or the do not disturb things. All these things adding up will make it nearly impossible for the average consumer to use this phone. I think Moto Android or iOS would be so much easier to use than Samsung software on this phone. So, should you buy this phone with notification issues, with do not disturb, buttons that are too close to each other, Bixby, which is completely worthless, and all these other things that I just talked about. If you are the average consumer and you don't know what settings mean, how to go through it, if you don't want to take the time to set up your Samsung phone, is it for you? Probably not. Now, if you can use the software and get around all of that like me, um, even though I still hate it, is it worth it? I would say yes, because the hardware is the closest thing to perfect we have ever seen in a phone before. Camera is amazing, battery life is amazing, audio quality is amazing, display is amazing, the feel of it, it's big, but it's very nice. Like, all the hardware, it's the best phone I have ever seen. So it's really up to you. Can you use the software? That's really what it comes down to. Is it worth $1,000? For the hardware, heck yeah. Like, compare it to the iPhone X Max now that's out, it's $1,500. That is just complete insanity. Who would spend $1,500 on the phone? Apparently a lot of people, because a lot of people have done it. That's crazy spending $1,500 on a phone. And five years ago, we thought you were crazy if you spent $500 on a phone. Now, you have a $1,000 phone, and people are spending $1,500 on a phone. If you're one of those people who are gonna go spend $1,500 on the new iPhone, then is this worth it? Probably, unless you have been an iOS user forever, and then this software makes absolutely no sense to you. But, it is cheaper, and it has better hardware. So, it's a trade-off. Samsung, if you're watching, please fix these issues. Please, we beg you. You don't want a phone that no one can use. And it's a sad thing to make a perfect phone that is unusable. Please fix your software and make your perfect phone a truly perfect phone. Please. This phone's gonna be the phone that I use for the next many years, and it's gonna do a good job. Um, I'm still gonna get frustrated with a few things in the software. That's my review on the Note 9 for using it for about a month daily. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.